and 31. Sister Nancy, a few days ago, was in the hospital and there was a woman there that uh, she got a chance to witness to and talk to about some different things. And uh, the lady been going through a lot of things and I guess like most people had questions, you know, to why, you know, why has this been going on? What's happening? Why is this happening? There's a woman that calls me and wants me to get a hold of every prophet that I can to see why she's having so much trouble in her life. And Sister Nancy remembered a sermon that I preached several years ago called Stumbling Block or Stepping Stone. And she wanted me to get her a copy of that, but I can't find it. But anyway, that led me to the long the lines that I'm going to be ministering to for a few minutes this morning. Mm -hmm. Actually, not in the direction that I thought. Because at the time when I preached that message, probably t 10 years ago or better, I guess. It had more to do with the troubles and trials, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes for a little bit this morning. But that message had more to do with the things that happen in our lives, such as trials and hard times that we face and maybe loss of loved ones or just different things that everyone goes through and how that we can allow those things in our lives to destroy us or to make us stronger. We can allow those things, we can make a choice whether to let something be a stumbling block to us or a stepping stone to get us a little bit closer, a little bit farther down the road. And as I began to study along these lines, I found a man who we've read about and talked about and heard sermons about. We use him as an example all the time. And this situation that arose in his life was more his doing than it was just something that happened. As it is a lot of times in our lives, you know, the things that happen, a lot of times it's our fault. Amen? We don't like to admit that. But a lot of times we mess up. Amen? I do. I mess up. And we find such a circumstance here in Matthew, the 26th chapter and beginning of the 31st verse. The Bible says, Then saith Jesus unto them, Now Jesus is getting ready to be delivered up to the soldiers and then taken you know, before the Sanhedrin and before Pilate and Herod and all of the things that he would face. And he's talking to his disciples here. And he says, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. He's talking to them about something that's getting ready to happen. And he's saying, this is going to be hard on you. He says, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. He goes on to say, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And Peter answered, and this is who we want to talk about for a few minutes this morning, is good old Peter. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus looks at him and says, Verily I say unto you that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Three times you're going to deny me. But Peter affirmed even, even stronger, Brother Sleece, he said, Though I should die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all of his disciples. Jesus is saying you're going to be offended because of what's going to happen. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be going through a trial. You're going to be facing something that you've never faced before. Thank God for Brother David coming in here. Amen. Good to be here. Amen. Good to see you. He's telling his disciples, I'm, he's been trying to tell them this for a little while, Brother Sleece, but they just ain't been getting it. How many times God tried to tell you something, but it just took you a while to get it? Amen? Amen. Finally, you say, okay, Lord, I get it now. Amen? Yeah. But he talks to you, and he's been trying to tell his disciples. He told them once, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be delivered up. I'm going to be killed. Three days later, I'm going to rise again, you know, and they didn't want to hear that. And he's telling them here, that this night it's going to come to pass what I've been talking to you about. And you're going to be offended. Yeah. And he says that 
You're going to walk away. The, the, as it is written, the shepherd will be smitten and the sheep will scatter. And Peter stands up in his boldness and he says that I will not deny thee. I won't be offended of thee. I, and then Jesus says you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, I'll go with you to the death. I will not deny you. Yeah, come on. And then the soldiers come, as you know uh, how it goes. The soldiers came and they arrested him. Yeah. And they took him before Pilate and they took him before Herod. And we pick this up, jump down a few verses there, Matthew the 26th chapter, 69th verse. It says, Now Peter sat without in the palace. Yeah. So here Peter is. He's followed him from a distance. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. He's followed him from a distance and he's watched as they took him in before the council and he's watched as they, they're judging him and they've got charges on him that there's no basis for and they're false accusing him and no doubt this is one of the worst, one of the hardest times in Peter's life. Yeah, come on. And he's watching what they're doing to the Savior. Amen. And the Bible says that Peter sat without in the palace. He's out like what we would call the hallway there. And a damsel came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Yeah. And this man that had just a few verses before this, just a few hours before this, had told Jesus, I'll never deny you. I'll go with you all the way to the end. I will die with you if I have to. Come on. How many times have you felt that bold in God? You felt like, I'll never deny you, Lord. I'll go, I'll never forsake you. I'll never turn my back on you. And then you mess up. Right. <laughs> then you mess up. Amen. Maybe not exactly as we find it laid out here in Matthew, the 26th chapter. But you got all fired up in the Spirit and you wanted to build three tabernacles like the men that are on the Mount of Transfiguration. You decided you'd never sin again. You'd never mess up again. You'd never lose the fire you got in your soul that's burning for Jesus. And you find yourself somewhere along the line stumbling. Yeah. Amen. Right. Doing something you shouldn't have done. Um. And it says that Peter turns to this damsel. Yeah. The Bible says he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Yeah. He leaves from her, the Bible says, and goes out onto the porch. And another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Now he says, I swear, I don't know him. I don't know him. Of course, you have to realize some of the things that Peter was facing here. He already knew that they had Jesus before the council. He already knew that they had arrested him. And of course, our flesh don't want to be arrested. Amen? Right. We don't want to be tortured. We don't want to be tormented. So he's facing fear. He's facing all of the trouble and trial and the things that he's, that he's going through and the confusion that Jesus, his master, has been arrested. He knows that Jesus has the power. Right. To get himself out of this situation, but he ain't doing nothing. Amen. Matter of fact, he ain't even saying nothing. Amen? That's right. So they come to him and they say, you're him. He says, no, I ain't. And they come to him out on the porch says, this is one of them. And he says, no, I swear I'm not. Verse 73 says, after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also art one of them. Yeah. For thy speech bewrayeth thee. Meaning they could tell by the way he talked yeah. that he'd been with him. Amen. Amen. That's right. I could preach on that for a little while right there. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. You can tell by the way somebody talks whether they've been with him or not. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to what he said. They said, we know that you're one of them. Your, your speech has given you away. Uh -huh. Verse 74 says, then began he to curse yeah. and to swear. Right. He thought, well, if I can't convince them any other way, I'll just start cussing. And surely they'll know I don't know the man. Yeah. Surely they know I'm not one of his disciples in. Amen. Uh -huh. Surely I can convince them if I start cussing and cursing and just denying it with everything that's within me. Right. Says he began to curse and begin to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Yeah. Uh-oh. He's standing there denying him. And he hears in the distance yeah. a cock crowing. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you imagine? I doubt if you can. I can't. I can't imagine.
the conviction and the sorrow that gripped the heart of Peter at that moment. He had stood and looked in the master's eyes just a few hours before and said, I won't deny you. I'll go with you, even in death. If I have to die with you, I'll die with you. I'm not going to leave your side, Jesus. I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to be offended because of you. But I'll go with you all the way to the end. And immediately the cock crew in the Bible says, And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out, and he wept bitterly, the Bible says. As a matter of fact, the book of Luke says, 22 and 61, as had happened, as he denied him the third time, and as the cock crew, the Bible says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. So apparently the door was open, or maybe there was no door. Maybe you could see inside where the council was judging him and where the trial was going on. Yeah. And as the cock crew, after Peter had denied him three times, Jesus turns and looks at Peter. So there stands Peter now, looking into the eyes of the one that just a few hours before, Brother David, he had looked into those gentle, loving eyes and said, I'll go with you. I'll give my life for you. I'll never deny you. And now he looks into the eyes of his master, realizing what he has done. And Peter, the Bible says here in the book of Luke as well, went out and wept bitterly. Think about what's happened. Think about what we just read. Think about what we just talked about here. Think about what a failure Peter must have felt like. Amen? Think about what kind of conviction, what kind of sorrow he must have felt in his soul. He had walked with the Master. He had broken bread with Him. Yeah. He had laughed with Him. Mm. He had slept in the same places. Mm. He had traveled miles upon miles. Mm. Right. Every day fellowshipping with Him. Amen. Almost like one of His, I guess He was one of His right hand men. Right. Amen. Right. Can you, have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Somebody that you thought, oh listen, I know what I'm talking about here. Amen. Somebody that you thought, Brother David, would never ever do you wrong. Right. Somebody that you had, you had fellowshiped with. Uh -huh. So, Do you remember what David said over there in the book of Psalms? It wasn't my enemy that done this wrong to me, but it was my comrade. It was my friend. Yeah. It was the one that I went up to the temple with. Amen. Right. How many times in your life has someone that you, somebody you, you was, it was your best friend? Uh -huh. Somebody that you always could turn to. You've prayed with them. You've worshipped with them. You've went to church with them. You've, you've depended upon them to be there. Yeah. And then they all but did to you what Peter just did to Jesus. Right. He just denied the man. That's right. Amen. Come on. He just vehemently denied that he ever knew him. Right. He had walked with him. He had talked with him. He had ate with him. He had laughed with him. He had cried yeah. with him. Amen. Come on. He had looked him in the eye right. and said, I'll never deny you. You can trust me, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm. 